The PM and the New South Wales government making a joint pledge today to deliver a $220 million upgrade to the Epping Bridge in Sydney. Joining us live here in the studio is the Infrastructure Minister, Paul Fletcher. Minister, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks good to for be your with time. You. So $220 million for the uh, Epping Bridge. Is that a pre-election sweetener for the Bennelong candidate, Simon Kennedy? Well, our candidate, Simon Kennedy, has been out and about talking to voters in Bennelong and certainly... Uh, traffic congestion is a significant issue in Benelong. Now, the Epping Bridge, it's where uh, Epping Road and Beecroft Road meet, just in the Epping Town Centre there. It's a major commuter route for people going to the CBD, also people going to Macquarie Park, where the university is and lots of businesses. Uh, and uh, planning work began on this some time ago. What this commitment means is that if we're re-elected, uh, the people of Benelong can have confidence that there's $220 million there, $110 million from the Commonwealth Government, $110 million from the New South Wales Government, for a very significant upgrade. So there'll be a third uh, westbound lane, uh, there'll be a wider uh, bicycle lane, uh, bigger median in the middle. So improved safety and reduced congestion. Right, OK. Why go with that and not the suburban rail loop, which Anthony Albanese, as you just heard, and Daniel Andrews have are pushing today? Uh, well, our $120 billion 10-year rolling infrastructure program makes commitments all around the country. We work with state and territory governments to uh, identify projects we'll support. In Victoria, we're supporting a wide range of projects, $3.6 billion for two intermodal terminals in Beveridge to the north of Melbourne and Truganina to the west, along with supporting rail and road infrastructure, uh, major funding uh, commitments uh, across a whole range of projects in Victoria. Suburban Rail Loop, uh, in our view, the business case at this stage does not make the case. It's an enormously expensive project, more than $50 billion over, its, uh, over the full project. We are, of course, funding $5 billion uh, towards the $10 billion Melbourne Airport Rail Link. We're funding $2 billion for Geelong faster rail. So we've got very big rail funding commitments in Victoria. It's 800 jobs, though. That seems pretty good. Uh, and indeed, the $3.6 billion that we're committing for uh, intermodals, you know, Mitchell Shire Council estimates that the uh, beverage uh, intermodal terminal would generate some uh, 20,000 jobs. Now, curiously, Federal Labor have not come out and supported that. It's in the seat of McEwen. Uh, Rob Mitchell mm. has... Uh, has actually been quite dismissive, the local member. He should be fighting hard for these jobs. Mm. Um, so we're absolutely committed to jobs in Victoria and we've got, uh, we're supporting major projects that will drive jobs. We just don't believe Suburban Rail Loop, uh, um, the business case has been made out yet. Uh, maybe the Victorian government can do more work, but we just don't think the case is there. Uh, interestingly, you know, in the last election, uh, Federal Labor committed $10 billion for Suburban Rail Loop. This time they're now committing just over $2 billion. So good question for Federal Labor would be why have they changed their position? OK, a couple of issues before we go. We did mention Simon Kennedy there. He recently addressed a conspiracy theory group in Bennelong labelling vaccines as chemicals. Are you comfortable with that kind of language? Look, what I'm comfortable with is that Simon Kennedy is an outstanding candidate for Bennelong. He's a former school captain of Epping Boys High. He's a, a former partner of McKinsey. Very bright, very capable. He will be a very strong representative for the people of Benelong in the federal parliament if he's elected. He appears to be placating, though, to anti-vaxxers as well as those who are vaccinated. You can't have it both ways, surely. Uh, well, look, what, what uh, Simon is doing is getting out and talking to people in his electorate of Benelong. That's what you'd expect a political candidate to do, and I know he'll be a very, very effective advocate but for But if people. he's using language that's incorrect, I mean, that, that's... Surely can't proceed with that kind of language. Uh, he's a very, very capable candidate. He'll be a very capable member of parliament. Uh, getting out and about, talking to people in this electorate, as you'd expect. What about these comments from Catherine Deves um, <laughs> on gender reassignment was mutilation? That's according to her. She's not really walking back that language. What are your thoughts on that? Look, Catherine Deves is a very strong candidate for the people of uh, Warringah. She will, she will represent Warringah very, very effectively. Uh, uh, she's a she's a mum. She's obviously well qualified, legal qualifications. Uh, a strong uh, experience. I think she'll be a very effective advocate. And look, she's raised an issue that many parents are rightly concerned about. Parents of girls, the question of uh, fairness mm. and safety for girls playing sport. That's that's a real issue. And yeah. it, it can't be the case that we can just declare sets of issues, you know, off out of bounds. Um, she's raised an issue that many parents are concerned about. Uh, but of course, she will represent the people of Warringa across a whole range of issues as part of a strong, effective, experienced Liberal National team with a strong plan for a right. stronger... Would you call gender reassignment mutilation, though? Uh, look, I, I, I'm not going to get into the details of that issue. What I will say is that Catherine uh, 
uh, is clearly a strong voice for parents, and we know that many parents, parents of girls uh, uh, playing sport and girls and women involved in sport, the issue of fairness and safety in women's sport uh, is a significant issue. Uh, and um, it's uh, Catherine Deves is speaking up for the concerns of many Australians. Okay. Mike Baird has said this morning that you're a future Prime Minister. Do you want the gig? Uh, Mike Baird came to my campaign launch. He was guest of honour. He made a very generous assessment. We had uh, a lot of enthusiastic local Liberals in St Ives a bit of a week ago. Uh, it's a very generous assessment from Mike. I'll, I'll leave it to him <laughs> to make the case it, for that. Do you want it, Do you want the gig? Uh, I am uh, uh, very happy doing the job I'm doing. We've got a very capable and experienced Prime right, Minister as part, enough, of, just part of a strong that's and experienced enough. Liberal team. Uh, I'll leave it to others to assess whether what Mike had to say uh, has any substance at all. But, look, I appreciate it, Mike, making that generous assessment. I'm getting on with representing the people of Bradfield and uh, the important work as Minister for uh, Communications okay. and Urban If Scott right. Morrison loses the election, will you run for the Liberal leadership? Uh, that's an extremely hypothetical question. We're, I'm totally focused on Scott Morrison winning the election uh, and on um, uh, our Liberal national team being returned okay. uh, with a strong plan for the future of also Australia. Also not a no. Uh, look, it's, let, let's, let's, let's focus on, on, <laughs> on the real issues here. Okay. The, re the real issues are a strong economy, a stronger future for Australia. Paul Fletcher, appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Thanks for your time. I'll talk Thanks to you soon.